doing? Thanks for stopping by. My name's Eric and on this episode of Smoking I'm going to show you how to cook lobster tails specifically using the sous vide method. Now I got three beautiful lobster tails that I picked up here. Real basic ingredients. Some lemon, some regular old salt and pepper, a couple sticks of butter. That's all you need. Lobster tails I absolutely love. I'm really looking forward to this because my son's never tried lobster but he's very curious. Uh, he tried crab for the first time last week, absolutely loved it, and he's been a big fan of shrimp. So uh, I have a creeping suspicion he's going to love lobster as well. I'm almost afraid to let him try it because I'm afraid he's going to uh, have some very expensive taste as he approaches his teenage years. <laughs> but you know what? He has expensive taste just like me, just like his mom. Anyway, lobster is one of those things that's kind of intimidating because A, it's very expensive, and B, uh, you know, there's a fine window between cooking it correctly and cooking it incorrectly, in which case uh, the money that you spent on the lobster kind of goes down the drain. That's where the sous vide machine comes in handy because it's going to cook it to a precise temperature and you don't have to stress out about it. So I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Stick around. Let's get cooking. So a couple things I want to show you right off the bat. When you get them, you're usually buying them from the grocery store and they're usually frozen. So let them defrost overnight in the fridge. Or if you're cooking them the same day, uh, put them in uh, a, a bucket of cold water and let them sit there for 20 minutes to a half hour. That helps defrost them as well. You'll know they're completely defrosted when you can bend the tail back and it can touch the meat like so. So that's how you know they're fully done. Now the first thing I'm going to do here you can see it's got these little spines. They're very sharp here. So we just want to take something like a, a, a scissor or clippers, whoops, and you just want to cut them off to make them nice and smooth because this, we don't want it to puncture the bag because we're going to be cooking this in the bag, obviously, in the sous vide machine. Now, some people like to remove the meat completely from the shell and just serve it that way. I think uh, serving them with the shell is a much better uh, presentation. That's usually how they, how they do it in high-end restaurants. So what I do here, use a pair of scissors or you can use uh, kitchen shears like I have here. And we're just gonna cut straight down the, the center of this shell, just like so. We wanna go all the way down, but we don't wanna go all the way through to the shell, just like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split this open and be careful because this shell is very sharp. It's very hard. It's very sharp. And try to get your thumbs in there. Kind of break it apart like this, you see. And what, what we're going to do here is we're just going to try to pull this meat out and separate it so we can pull it out and stick it on the top of the shell when we're done cooking it. I'm doing this ahead of time. Uh, and it's easier said than done. But you'll get the hang of it once I'm done. So I pull it out like this. So then you stick the shell back together and you kind of put the lobster meat on top there. And that's how you're going to present it. It looks like a beautiful, delicious lobster tail. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to these other two as well as cut off the sharp uh, points on the end and we'll be back in a second. So here you are after you have them all uh, nicely pulled out on top of the shell. Now we're just going to salt and pepper them. Now we don't need to go crazy here. We don't want to overpower just a little bit of some salt like you can see here. Don't go crazy. And a little bit of black pepper. Just for a little bit of flavoring, that's all. Boom. Now we're going to put these back into the shell for cooking. And then we're going to pull them out like this again when we're done for presentation. So. What you do then is just open up the shell and just kind of the meat will fall right back into its natural place like that. And then I'm just going to put a couple sticks of butter or little dabs of butter. I took a, a stick of butter and I sliced it into little small pieces here. We're going to add a little bit more butter to the bag, but just like that. Boom. And so now. Look how easy that is. I mean, my goodness. So there you go. So now you can either put these in a uh, 
a Ziploc freezer bag or you can vacuum seal them. I'm going to put them in, um, in the bag with uh, some slices of lemon and a little bit more butter and that's it. So let me get these bagged up and we'll get them put in uh, water here and we'll be having some delicious lobster tails shortly. See you in a minute. All right, as you can see, I cut some lemons and I put them on the bottom of this bag. And then you just take your lobster tails and just stick them on top of the lemons. I like to put them with the tails towards the back because you want to make sure the meat is fully sub submerged. And then I got a little bit, some extra butter here I'm just going to throw in just for added measure. You know what? Lobster and butter go together. And I got a couple extra lemon slices I'll throw in as well. And there you go. That is it. Not very complicated. Look how easy it is. You can impress your friends too with this recipe. So now we're just going to uh, seal it up. I'm going to use the displacement method when I stick it and lower it in the hot water. I'm going to fill up my sous vide machine and we'll be back in a second when these are ready to go in. All right, welcome back. While I'm waiting for that sous vide machine to warm up, I'm going to try a limited edition from Stone Brewing Company out of California here. Now it looks like at first glance, impeach, double IPA. But when you look at it, there's an apostrophe. So it's I'm peach because it's a double Indian pale ale brewed with peaches, 8.8% alcohol. So that caught my attention. Little clever play on words. So I'm going to give it a shot. Now I vowed not to get political in my cooking videos, and I'm not going to, but needless to say, we have a president now, Donald Trump, and a lot of people on one side of the spectrum want to do the old impeach route. Me, I prefer to drink a I'm Peach IPA, double IPA. <laughs> I'll just keep it at that. All right. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching my video. Thank you very much. This is going to be delicious. Okay, so let's take a look here. It's kind of a, a hazy honey kind of color, nice decent head. Okay, I smell tropical fruits. I do smell peach, grapefruit, maybe pineapple, and a little bit of hops. Cheers. Thanks again for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to put them down below. I try to answer every single one of them. Cheers. Wow, a lot of fruit right, right up front, and I definitely taste peaches. I definitely taste pineapple. And then right at the end, mm, well, maybe a little bit of grapefruit. There's a slight bitterness, but it's certainly not very strong. And a little bit, a little bit of a bitter finish, but not much. Certainly considering it's 8.8% alcohol, boy, that peach in there really hides the alcohol content. It's actually, I mean, it's a medium beer, medium carbonation, but it doesn't taste like 8.8% alcohol. Mm. Mild hops at malt, but really compared to other IPAs where that hop presence is so strong and it's so bitter in the aftertaste, I'm not getting that at all here. I mean, I'm getting it very lightly which is nice. It's a very well-balanced beer. Wow. I'm enjoying this. You know what? I forgot to turn on my <laughs> sous vide machine. Whoops. I had it on. I just need to push the start button. So we're going to be cooking this at 140 degrees. And we're going to be cooking this anywhere from around a half hour to an hour. Uh, if they're a little bit uh, still frozen, Go for a little bit longer. Go 45 minutes to an hour. If they've been sitting in the fridge and they're completely thawed out, a half hour should be plenty. So let's see. Let's start this. Yeah, I'm already. I used hot tap water, which I always recommend. It's already at 130 degrees, so this should literally just take a few minutes to warm up. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this beer. We'll be back in a second, guys. Thanks again. There you heard it. 140 degrees. I got the timer set to one hour. So here we go. Another thing I noticed, 
A good idea of putting those lemon slices on the bottom is because where I showed you those little uh, sharp edges on the edge of the tail, even though you snip them, they still kind of got a little bit of a sharp edge. So this way, when you lay them down flat on those uh, lemons, they kind of act as a barrier to prevent the bag from being uh, punctured. So I didn't even realize I was making a decent suggestion by having the laying them on, on lemons, but that's actually definitely the way to go. Okay, so we're going to squeeze most of that air out as best I can. I'm going to seal it up just to that one little corner. And here goes nothing. <clears throat> In the water, sometimes this uh, displacement method takes a little bit of practice because you got to force it sometimes underwater. There we go. Come on. Come on. Get under there. I might have to find something heavy to hold these bad boys down. Yeah, they're not they're not gonna cooperate with me, are they? I'm not gonna hit this timer to start it, so it's gonna keep beeping until I got these completely underwater. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get creative. In the meantime, let me uh Attach them on the side. Let me see what I can find here. All right, I'm just gonna use this here, kind of to force it. Well, there you go. Whatever works. All right. Let me wait till it beeps again. And we'll start this. We'll be on our way. There we go. Boom. One hour. Looking forward to some lobster tails. I'll have my wife and my son out here. We'll try these things. I'm looking forward to it. I got some butter melting on the stove. Going to be delicious. See you in a little bit. All right, it's been in for 39 minutes. It's looking good. It's looking real good. Let me see if I can show you. The butter in the center is kind of melting. Yeah, it's looking good. Definitely the meat's turning color. I know if you boil lobster, the shells turn bright red. These definitely are turning redder, but not as bright as I thought they might. So we'll see what they what they look like in around another half hour or so. Looking forward to this. All right, here we are. It just beeped. It's been one hour. Take this off. Oops. Ow. Let me turn that off. Now I'm just going to carefully take them out of the bag and just put them on a paper towel here to save some of that juice. All right, so I took them out. Just put a little uh, parsley on top. I squeezed some lemon. I got some melted butter here. Oh man, they look delicious. See how you just lay them on top of the shells there for a good uh, presentation. Now if you were barbecuing something, you could throw these on the grill, get a little crisp on them, but it's not really necessary. They're perfectly cooked. So, be back in a second with the family. We'll try one of these and see how they are. All right, here we are with the whole family. My son Kyle, my wife Monica. All right. I chopped some up here in some little pieces. We'll give this to, take that one, Monica. And Kyle, I got some clarified butter here. Hang on, dip it in the, in the butter here. Dip it like this. Oh, I, for, like... I forgot to squeeze some lemon on here. Stick your pieces under here. Let me squeeze some lemon on there. All right. Uh, that looks more like lemony Thanks. than butter. Okay. Okay, no, that's butter. Okay, give it a try. Sure that is in margarine? Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. What do you think, Kyle? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, is that good. That is delicious. Oh, it's, my it's goodness. It's the perfect consistency. Wow. Okay, well, that's going to go fast. You saw, guys, how easy it is. Wow. Yeah, you know, this is great at a barbecue, Do If you got a sous vide, throw it on the grill just mm -hmm. for a second. Give it a little crispy. Man, people are going to be really impressed. And you don't, uh, don't have to worry about cooking it wrong. The sous vide makes it perfect. What do you think, Kyle? 
<laughs> we'll say something besides <laughs> make the faces. How do you compare it to shrimp or crab? Awesome. Awesome is pretty similar, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I think he likes it. <laughs> okay. Guys, as always, Watch. thanks for watching. Check out my um, website. The link's right above. It's ericsmokingbarbecue.com. If you like the video, hit like. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.